So I'll quickly go through the materials that I use to tie this pattern and I'll list the materials as well below the video. Uh, so like the name suggests, the pheasant tail, the foundation for this pattern is the pheasant tail feather. And this is the feather that I'll be using. This is a natural color. Uh, you can find them dyed in a variety of different colors, which changes the color um, of the pattern. Um, but I'm just going to be using this natural color uh, pheasant tail feather. And uh, this this material is going to be used for the tail of the fly as well as the uh, abdomen of the fly and the uh, legs at the later stages of the, fly, of the fly pattern. For the wing case, you can use the pheasant tail fiber. However, I find those fi those um, uh, the pheasant tail feather, but I find the the, the, fib the feather fibers tend to be a little bit more fragile and tend to nick when you catch a fish the, t the fish's teeth sometimes can nick those those fibers if you use them for the wing case so I like to use the turkey feather the fibers tend to be a little bit thicker it's a very similar color and uh, so that's what I'll be using on this natural color turkey for the turkey feather for the wing case uh, for the thorax of the of the fly pattern I use uh, this peacock um, uh, feather. So this is a very common, commonly used feather for a lot of different com uh, popular patterns. But that's what I'll be using for the um, thorax of the pattern. And for the uh, rib, I like to use uh, this Danville's fine gold wire, which I use for a lot of different. Uh, patterns. I, I use it for the gold ribbed hair zero zero as well. Um, you can also use this uh, a little bit thicker wire I have here. Uh, if you tie this pattern in size 16, uh, 14, 12, um, you can use this, um, this wire as well. And you can use uh, this in uh, multiple different colors. The, you can find it in red, um, copper, copper is a popular one to use for the pheasant tail. I like the gold color, just that's just a personal preference of mine. And for this pattern, I am going to be using, uh, I'm going to weight it, and so I'm going to use this lead wire. This is in size 0 0.01, and I'm just going to make a couple wraps <clears throat> in the initial, initial stages of the pattern to give this one a little bit more weight. And of course, I finished the fly with some head cement. The uh, thread that I use is this sheer 14 knot thread and I, I really like to use the thin thread that's again a, a personal preference um, and I'm gonna be tying it in brown this label is just a little worn out so I tie this in brown and 14 knot um, fine sheer thread and you'll need um, your scissors and your finishing tool and this pattern I'm gonna tie a size 16 which is um, a pretty standard size for nymphs and um, <clears throat> uh, this is a TMCO size 16 nymph hook. You can you can uh, tie it in whatever size you, uh, hook you want to um, uh, and whatever brand you can um, is your preferred brand whether you uh, prefer cheaper cheaper hooks um, but I'm tying this in size 16 a size 16 nymph hook. Okay, so the first step that I'm going to do is pinch the barb of the hook. Um, this is just something that I like to do. Uh, I do a lot of catch and release, um, native trout fishing here in Virginia, and so uh, I like to pinch the barb, and to do that, you can just put the hook in there sideways like so. You can see it in there. And just use your vise to pinch that barb down. And then secure it into the vise. Um, and make sure that the shank of the hook is fairly horizontal there. And then you want to start your thread base like so and bring that thread back to the end of the shank, which is about where that where it starts to bend um, around that point. Clip your excess thread. 
And at this point, I'm gonna add uh, a little bit of uh, weight in the form of this lead wire. And to do so, I just broke off a, uh, uh, a short piece of this lead, and I'm gonna start wrapping it a little bit past the halfway mark of the shank and bring it up to about this point. You don't wanna get it too close, bring it up too close to the base of the eye just because it tends to bulk things up and make ending the fly a lot more difficult. And you can just wiggle those end pieces um, to easily break them off right at the base. I'm gonna add a couple dabs of this head cement just to secure everything down, to secure the base down. Um, you don't want your fly to come apart on you when you're fishing. Um, and so I like to make sure the base is pretty secure. Bring your thread up and just a couple wraps, a couple layers of thread over that lead wire. And if you have any pieces that end up sticking up, you can use your fingernail. Secure those down. And at this point, we're going to add our tail. And so I'm going to grab my pheasant tail feather and I'm going to use about 10 to 12 fibers and uh, to get them lined up you can pull them straight perpendicular from the base of the fiber or base of the feather and what this does is it lines all those fibers up um, so that they're all the same length like so so you can see they're all the same length and then use your scissors to cut and so that's about 10 or so fibers and the length of the tail um, should be about three quarters of the length of the shank so that's about the full length um, and so the tail I'm going to be tying in about that and you can measure it there get a grip on with the other fingers make a loose loop wrap make a, another loose wrap so that it's secure and you can see take a look and um, adjust it if you need to. If it's a little bit too long, you can pull it, pull the fibers this way. If it's too short, you can pull them this way. And I'm pretty happy with that. And so I'm going to make a couple more tight wraps. Make sure everything's cinched down. And at this point, uh, I'm going to be tying in um, uh, my gold wire, and I'm just going to make a short, cut a short strip of that wire from the spool. I'm going to bring it up next to the fly and make one wrap with my thread just to keep it secure there. Uh, I don't like to build up a huge amount of bulk here at the base just so that I can maintain a pretty good taper, thin, thin at this point and thicker at this point, since aquatic insects tend to have that tapered body. And so for the abdomen of the, of the fly, I'm going to be again using the pheasant tail. I'm going to be using about four, um, four fibers for this. And again, I'm going to pull them straight away from the, or perpendicular from the um, base of the feather so that they're all lined up like so. And if you don't get them perfectly even, you can take your scissors and Cut them and we're gonna bring those feathers up next to the fly and make a couple wraps to secure them and at this point you can bring your thread make some tight wraps and secure everything down and I'm gonna make a cut like so with the excess and I'm gonna bring that excess gold wire up and trim it as close as I can, like so. And I like to cut that excess about where that um, lead wire starts so that it doesn't build too much of a, of a bulk and it maintains the taper pretty well. So you can see I, I um, you can see the tapered body there. And so at this point you wanna bring your thread about where you wanna stop the abdomen, which is gonna be about halfway, a tiny bit more than halfway perhaps. So halfway between this point and this point, which is the shank, 
And you can see where my thread is, is about halfway, maybe a little bit more than halfway. And then you want to grab your um, pheasant tail fibers and start building the body up, the abdomen of the fly. And be careful of the point um, or the sharp tip of the hook because it will, if it nicks one of these fibers when you're wrapping it around it, they will, they break easily if they're nicked. So you want to be careful of that. And just bring those forward and about this point we want to make one wrap with our bobbin like so. Pull it tight. Make another tight wrap. And it's secure. <clears throat> and for the gold wire, you want to wrap in the opposite direction you wrapped the pheasant tail. And what this will do is it'll secure all those pheasant tail fibers down so that if a fish, you know, when you, when you catch a fish, um, if, a, if one of the fish's teeth nicks one of those pheasant tail fibers, it doesn't just unravel the whole thing. Um, this gold wire will secure things down so that um, the, the fibers won't unravel so much if they get nicked. And um, that's on top of it creating a ribbed look, which is um, an important look because a lot of aquatic insects have a segmented abdomen, and, and so it does a good job of imitating that segmented look. And so once you have your gold wire wrapped up, you can trim the excess here, like so, and secure everything down. And then you want to bring your thread back up to where you ended that abdomen. And at this point, we're going to tie in our wing case, which again, I'm going to be using the turkey feather. And I like to use my scissors to separate the feather fibers like so. And then cut them at the base like that. I didn't get all of them. That's all right. And that, the width of this tends to be the, the width of, um, from the point, from the tip of the hook there to the shank. That's a pretty good measurement of how wide this should be. And I'm going to be tying this in. We can tie that, make a loose wrap of the, just over top of it like that so that you can adjust things. And that's pretty good. So I'm going to make another tight wrap like that. And at this point, I'm going to be tying in um, the material that we'll be using to create the thorax of the fly, which is the peacock feather. And you can see the feather is a little bit iffy down here. And so you can, you can trim it up. Just cut that piece off. And... Um, you can pull these fibers away. Um, actually, I'll go ahead and do that with your fingernail. You can pull some of those fibers away to decrease on the bulk. And then you want to tie that feather in right there. Secure everything down like so. Cut off the excess here. And you want to bring your thread about where you're going to end that, which is about there. You can see that's about where my thread is. We want to give ourselves a decent amount of space to, to tie in the legs and to finish the fly. And I'm going to start building up the abdomen or the um, thorax of the fly here with this pheasant or the um, peacock feather up to where you're about where your thread is, which is about there. So I'm going to Pull that around and do one wrap on this, couple wraps on this side, one wrap on this side, secure it. Cut that excess off. And at this point, I'm going to be tying in the legs, which again is going to be um, the pheasant tail. And so I'm going to grab around 15 uh, fibers, pheasant tail fibers here. And you want to make sure they're all fairly lined up like that. 
they are all fairly lined up and even by pulling them perpendicular away from the base of that feather you can see they're all fairly lined up and the length of this of the legs are going to be about the length of the thorax of this fly so you can put them over top layer them over top of that um, your, your peacock feather make a couple wraps not too not too tight because at this point we're going to be separating we're going to be pulling some so at this step you can see I have them separated one side and the other side pull your wing case over top and make one loose wrap there make sure it's cinched down pretty tight make another tight wrap there pull everything back make a couple tight wraps and then cut the excess off like so and at this point we're ready to finish the fly and so I'm going to add a couple dabs of this head cement to the thread like that that was a little bit much for my finger there and then we're going to take our finishing tool and make a couple wraps I like to do it twice here There we go. And make sure that head cement is, didn't clog up the eye of the hook there, which it didn't. And so we'll cinch it down and trim our thread. And that is a finished size 16 pheasant tail. And you can see um, you got the legs sticking out. You got a good ribbed abdomen and the wing case over top, that dark wing case and the leggy peacock feather for the thorax. So this is the pheasant tail in size 16 and how to tie it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, stay tuned for other other videos on how to tie uh, different popular patterns as well as some patterns of my own that have proven, proven pretty effective. Uh, and uh, thank you for watching.